Um, so the talk will be about endoscopic T-lift. And I think, uh, you know, having been in endoscopy for the last 10 years, I think uh, the coming years right now are going to make a, a, a tremendous change. And I, I will explain to you why I think this is happening. Here's my uh, disclosures. Um, there's some relevant uh, teaching for Globus and obviously Troy Max is uh, I'm working with too, but AO Spine and Wolf as well. So all of these are endoscopic companies. Um, so here's the definition of an endoscopic T lift, and I think that's that's really really one of the take home slides of this whole talk is like, um, you know, obviously we're trying to enter the disc via the Cambins triangle, uh, but the 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 real important part is here that we want to accomplish direct endoscopic visualization of the entry into the Cambins triangle and direct visualization of the completeness of the disc prep. If those two things are not accomplished, then it's, it, we would really have to speak of a percutaneous fusion, and this is what this is not. Um, additionally, this technique allows you for uh, optional direct decompression of the foramen and lateral recess on the ipsilateral side. So this is really, really important because you will see uh, the next coming years, you're going to see a lot of different alterations of this, and uh, a technique should really allow for those two moments to, to, to be accomplished. Couple of things here right now is what's the advantage, what's the disadvantage of endoscopic versus MIST lifts. Um, the endoscopic version is less destabilizing, we take less of the joint. Um, it's if you live in a high BMI area, uh, you will love to do it endoscopically because you only are limited by the length of, of your endoscopic shaft. So it really allows uh, to do these cases in much larger patients. Uh, there's less nerve root retraction. Uh, you can visualize the disc prep and actually see uh, how modest your discectomy, uh, you know, prep is uh, that you were so proud of for many years, including myself. It's very humbling. Um, there's a decreased erotomy rate. Uh, it is feasible to do these sur surgeries with local anesthesia, and there's definitely a faster recovery. Disadvantages, again, as, as Osama mentioned before, there's, there's training. It takes a lot of effort to get there technically, even though... Uh, the endoscopic T lift is technically really one of the easiest full endoscopic procedures um, in terms of handling the endoscope. Um, there's equipment cost, but definitely not more than a microscope. Um, you know, we have to do a foraminotomy, or let's call it a foraminoplasty. Um, and it's difficult right now with severe central canal compression, even though a couple of, uh, like a week ago, I started to do these two endoscopically. Um, and the cages are still smaller, but as I'll show you in a minute, this is really changing rapidly. Um, and the, really the, the big elephant is room, the segmental lordosis. Uh, <clears throat> indications currently for endoscopic T-lifts are unilateral foraminal stenosis, is perfect indication that we can open up the unilateral side, ipsilateral to the cage beautifully. Uh, grade one enterolysthesis with bilateral foraminal stenosis, spondylolysis, uh, endoscopic contraindications right now. Grade two and grade three enterolysthesis cases are really not uh, not very feasible for this right now. It's, this is where you can use the power of open uh, distraction, laminar spreaders, uh, screw paste distractors uh, that to you really to your advantage. So um, I think this is where we are struggling. And this is where you know I've I've not been uh, you know pushing the the limits there. <clears throat> Severe central stenosis is again uh, I think not in a contraindication anymore. I'm doing this more and more. That now you can actually do a PLIF type um, of approach. Uh, not the not the topic of this talk, but we're really moving the needle forward there. So this is not a central uh, contraindication anymore. Um, severe deformity, I would say, is a contraindication. Um, and you know, any any time there's a better other technique. You know, an A lift might be better, an X lift, an O lift. Uh, no, there's so many lifts around, and you can do it as we have heard earlier on today. You can do them in any position of the surgeon and any position of the patient almost now these days. So um, <clears throat> here's a quick uh, overview of an endoscope, uh, four components, optical system, um, illumination, irrigation channel, and a working channel. Now, this is really where, where it becomes interesting. I think the, the, the rise and the advent of these expandable T-lift cages, obviously uh, it reduces the irritation of the exiting nerve root, there's, it allows for inside to expansion uh, and restoration of lordosis, and you can backfill with bone graft. Disadvantage price, and again, there's some interesting uh, movement on the market now that people really get the price down, and it's complicated deployment. Um, this is what we have right now on the market, uh, you know, two-dimensionally uh, expandable cages where uh, you know, we have some uh, products from Globus. Um, then we have the Optimish uh, cage that can be used. Uh, the Flare Hawk uh, is also three-dimensional. And, and those two technologies on the right side are interesting because they're additive 
uh, technologies. With other words, you just you put a shell in there and then you add more material. Where on the left side, you see one package delivered and then it expands. So it's a very interesting concept uh, that is actually uh, quite different there. Um, so let's see, uh, let's talk about the Kanban Triangle a little bit. So Kanban Triangle, a really innovative new approach uh, from uh, Dr. Wang uh, and his group uh, where they defined, finally, uh, you know, like clarified the Kanban Triangle. If we read the original paper by Kanban on the triangle, he lists four borders and then calls it the triangle. Um, and uh, Mike Wang was smart enough to figure that out. And so they, they defined it as a, as a prism. Uh, which is brilliant. Uh, so there's the superior nerve root, sorry, um, superior nerve root, um, the superior nerve root that defines the rostral aspect, the inferior is the, uh, the, the vertebral end plate of the caudal index level, medially is the traversing nerve root, and posterior is of this prism is the superior articular process. Um, and the reason this is so important uh, because this, uh, the superior articular process really limits the uh, the width uh, of this uh, region for entrance. Um, so quickly, uh, the steps, uh, again, we whittle them down to four steps now. We used to have many more like that. But um, again, the most important thing is to plan you know, the trajectory. Um, classically, full endoscopic uh, t lifts were done at, at 45 degrees. Uh, we have changed it much more and so typically two thirds of the distance uh very similar to a t lift so that um it is actually a very very similar approach trajectory i like to have the tip of the cage slightly uh off to the contralateral side of the mid lift on the midline uh off uh, resting on the epiphyseal plate with the hardest uh, structure of the bone there um docking on the sap uh we published a paper uh just now two years ago where uh, at our institution, uh, we don't have any more blind targeting of the foramen, so we don't go blindly into the foramen. Rather, we go and talk on the SAP. And, and doing that, we can uh, avoid a lot of uh, postoperative nerve root irritation. And this uh, lends itself uh, really well also for um, uh, getting into the Kanban triangle uh, in a visualized fashion. Foraminoplasty, uh, I never used to like this word, but it does make a lot of sense now that uh, foraminoplasty means that you open up the SAP, but it doesn't mean that you necessarily decompress the exiting nerve root. I know everybody's probably shaking their head right now. It's like, you know, what is the difference? Well, the difference is that in a foraminotomy, you also resect uh, the yellow ligament, scar tissue around the nerve root. You can resect the marginal osteophyte. So a foraminotomy entails, entails much more than a foraminoplasty. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, it took me a while to understand that, but but that's a really important difference. So here we just do a foraminoplasty, and uh, there's these sequential reamers and other drills that can be used. The nice thing about these reamers is they're just very safe. And why are they so safe? Well, they have a very small overhang uh, of just a little bit less than a millimeter. So even if you're against the nerve root, you're not going to take out that nerve root. Uh, it's just going to irritate it, obviously. So you don't want to do that, but it's 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 typically a very, very benign uh, approach if done if done well. Um, here's a foraminoplasty, and that can be an, uh, also completed with the drill. You can see there that we can high, use a high-speed drill once you're in there, and you can complete the foraminoplasty if you, if you didn't complete it with the uh, reamers. Uh, and the last thing is uh, you want to visualize uh, the entrance into the Kamen triangle. And here's a recent example. There was a thoracic disc that I did, but we're looking into the endoscope, into the Kamen triangle, into the foramen. In here, you see the spinal cord. Again, it was a thoracic case. And under vision, we're bringing this uh, cham sheety needle in there. So uh, I can't hit the spinal cord. I can't hit the exiting nerve root because I can see exactly where we're going. So this is a visualization that I would... Um, really uh, challenge anybody who does MIS surgery to get that while you enter the Kanban triangle. So it's, it's uh, as you can see, a very, very good visualization. And it's uh, you can see the exiting nerve root on the right side. Immediately is the spinal cord. Again, there was a thoracic case. I didn't find another video, but it, it, it shows the point. So it's fully visualized. So you're not going to go right into the exiting nerve root, uh, but you visualize everything. So this is why we are surgeons. We see stuff that we do. Um, and then you do the discectomy. There's a lot of tools for that. And I would encourage anybody who's interested in looking at the different uh, companies that have tools for that. Um, here's the end plate preparation that you can see at the end of the case. And you can see that the quality uh, of the end plate preparation is, is quite nice. And you can actually take cartilage off in the end. Uh, you can drill a little bit uh, and, and get a very nice, complete um, you know, exposure of the end plate uh, 
that again, the first time you do that uh, and you see it, um, I would also encourage anybody to do it in open case. You can see how much cartilage, even if it feels okay with the rasp, how much there's left. Um, so that's very, very, a very humbling step for, for an open surgeon or MRI surgeon uh, as we develop. Um, then we place some bone graft, placing the cage. Uh, and so very quickly, uh, uh, summing this up here, I think I might be over time here already, but um, you know, there's not a whole lot of literature on that. And definitely, uh, you know, I want to give kudos to Mike Wang for his uh, serious one-year follow-up, 100 patients, endoscopic t -lift. Um, a Good outcomes. I mean, ODI reduction of 12, um, you know, in this patient cohort, cohort two patients with cage migration, 100% successful arthrodesis on x-rays, however. Um, now, but that is, you know, was always the, for me, the big issue is, you know, if you look at this, uh, the pictures, and again, I've seen a lot of patients there during my fellowship, you know, the, the graft is just not allowing currently uh, to add a lot of lidosis. So pre-op in this example is 24 degrees uh, uh, segmental lidosis, post-op is 22 degrees. So we've lost two degrees. Um, and a recent meta-analysis that has looked at uh, of endoscopic T lifts of a total of 13 cases, 13 studies, uh, seven of those uh, performed in a transforaminal fashion. Um, again, they uh, confirm what uh, Dr. Wang showed in his paper with a 32 uh, mean ODI reduction. So very good. Uh, just to remind you, um, I think 15 of ODI is the MCID for that. So it's it's a very significant reduction. Complication rates in this meta-analysis range rates from zero to 28, and fusion rates from 38, uh, 30, 78 to 100 percent. Now, importantly, the fusion rates in the cases in the studies that were controlled were very similar between the MIS versus the endoscopic ones. So that was a, a common theme in these seven studies on on T lifts that the fusion rates are very similar to MIS T lifts. So I think there is not going to be a whole lot of issues there. Now, pearls, um, you know. It's, um, you know, the foraminotomy, the interesting thing is um, that, that the foraminotomy can be done by a more lateral incision. And I use this for a lot of uh, younger patients that have very, very large central hernia, uh, central disc protrusions with central stenosis from the ventral aspect. So you can do your incision for the foraminotomy a little bit more lateral. Uh, and then, yeah, as you've seen in the video, you actually enter with the champs needle on the vision in a more medial trajectory, typically use the incision for the um, for the pedicle screws. Um, and so it allows you to really get a very, very thorough decompression. Um, I also use them to accentuate the contralateral facet joint and then and then pack it with bone. Um, and that's something that I used to do with MIS too. Uh, and that's where also navigated drills come in very, very handy. Uh, for the thoracic spine, um, Again, the foraminotomy via much more lateral incision, as you've seen, and there you static cages just to be uh, uh, cheaper. Now, last slide here right now is I think what's missing here uh, is the burden of proof. Um, you know, I think we, as a field, we have to show that uh, even with uh, endoscopic surgery, we can restore segmental lordosis. Um, and again, this is a recent case that we did at the University of Washington here, and right, you can see that we came from 14 degrees of lordosis. Uh, onto 20, uh, 21 degrees. Um, and so I think it's feasible. We have to demonstrate durable clinical outcomes. So I think there's some studies on the way and we have uh, started uh, to collect outcomes and uh, you know, uh, Osama is part of this. And so we have, we are, as a group, um, we're collecting outcomes together. Uh, uh, the patients are recording that with a smartphone app uh, that we call spine healthy so there's a whole uh, consortium now of 10 surgeons in the country uh, collecting these outcomes um, we have to show that diffusion rates are similar to mi lift, and i think the literature supports that um, and we have to uh, you know develop solutions for all five as one so that's also uh, still an area that's difficult to do with the endoscope um, and here i would like to thank everyone and uh, if there's any questions i'm happy to to uh, answer them if possible thank you Great, great, Christoph. Uh, that was a very uh, extensive and uh, I think comprehensive sort of look at endoscopic T lift. I, I, you know, um, do you think navigation um, will be a benefit in this procedure at all? I mean, what, what do you think? It, you know, one of the downsides I, I feel with endoscopic surgery in general is is just a lot of fluoroscopy. Yes. Um, no, I think, uh, you know, and again, as you have seen here right now, I mean, I typically use navigation there. There's very few steps that you can't navigate yet. Um, the issue was typically that uh, with needle-based approaches, uh, the needles were flexible. Uh, now, with the trans-SAP approach, uh, you know, we, we use the Chemshi needle, so there's not as much flexibility. Um, so it allows for navigation. Um, 
I think navigation has had a, a, a little bit of a slow start, uh, but um, you know, looking at literature on what uh, radiation uh, means for the surgeon, uh, surgeons and the staff, uh, what type of health risk this is, um, I think we should all be, all be interested in, in pursuing that. So I use navigation and and really try to mi to, to to minimize it. But you're right. I mean, for the discectomy prep, um, going in and out of the instruments, uh, there's still some flu fluoroscopic control. Um, but some of the companies, if you look around, have very, very uh, uh, good solutions for that. Uh, for example, um, you know, Spinology, they have some very, very nice stops for the instruments so that you don't have to get an, um, an x-ray every time you enter an instrument. So uh, it, it, you know, we're, we're in the infancy of this uh, kind of whole project, but I feel uh, so far I've always been more pessimistic, but I feel that things are really uh, turning around and I think that's going to be terrific for our patients.